Whether it's because the PAP has depoliticized the society, I wouldn't put it like that. I would say it's because we are living in a time of peace and stability. If we had riots and revolutions, like Egypt or Tunisia or Libya or Yemen, then I think there will be a lot of people who will come forward and who will be passionate and wanting to fight and wanting to be leaders and getting involved in politics. But why do all of you not actively participate in politics except to get a ticket to come here and attend this <laughs> question and answer this evening? Because we've created a stable environment where you have many other things to do with your lives and the running of the country is in good hands, you think, and can be left to others to take care of. So that makes it difficult for us to, for, for, that makes it harder for young people to want to go in and say, I'm going to devote myself to, my life to politics. There will be some. But for most people, they'll say, I'd like to be a lawyer, I'd like to be an engineer, I'd like to be a doctor, I'd like to be an accountant, I'd like to be a professor, I better say that I'm in NUS. <laughs> but I'd like to go into politics. Not that many. That's a reality. The other reason why it is difficult for us to get young people to come into politics is because once you've gone into the private sector and pursued your careers, it's very hard to switch and come in and do a government-type job. Not just to become a minister. Even to enter a government department and be a government civil servant, it's very hard to do. We try hard to recruit civil servants mid-career. We recruit you when you are young. We try and recruit you when you are not so young, but have some experience. But we find that it's very difficult to get people to switch over because your mindset has already been developed in a certain direction. You want to do business, you want to pursue deals, you know your, your profession, you know your own contacts, you go into the government, you have to learn all over again. New skills, new habits of thinking, new uncertainties whether you will make it or not. Not so easy to do. And the more opportunities there are in the private sector, especially not just in Singapore but overseas, in China and India and the Middle East and all over the world, I think the harder it will be for us to get people to go from that path to come in and become MPs and ministers. Your second question, why do we take new citizens? They may have been new citizens, but there are people who have spent quite some time here, who have struck roots here, who have family here, and who we, have, we are satisfied that they are committed to Singapore and they will serve. There is an advantage having people serve in Singapore who were not born in Singapore. Because they've seen the world, they've seen what it's like elsewhere, there's a comparison, they know what is precious here, and all the more, I think, if they've decided that this is their home, they will defend it. I think the core has to be Singaporean. If most people in the team were not born here, that would be tough to hold the core together. But around a strong core, I can bring in people who are immigrants, who are new citizens, but who have shown that they are committed to Singapore.